Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam ama ba'd Continuing on in our study of Usul al-Sunnah by Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala I wanted to mention a couple of athar that Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri hafadhullah ta'ala mentioned regarding the point of being aware of Ahlul Bid'ah and uh, and and sitting with them, take and 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 that they are the people of uh, of their opinions and so forth, and to avoid debating with them. So he mentioned a beautiful uh, a beautiful hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's in Shara Sunnah lil Baghawi rahimahullah taala. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال سيكون في آخر أمة الناس يحدثونكم ما لم تسمعوا أنتم ولا أباءكم فإياكم وإياهم وفي صحيح وفي صحيح وفي في صحيح البخاري عن عائشة رضي الله تعالى عنها أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تلا هذه الآية هو الذي أنزل أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن هم الكتاب وأخرى متشابهة فما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ في يتبعون ما تشابه من ابتغاء فتنة ابتغاء ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويل تأويل قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا رأيت من الذين يتبعون ما تشابه منه فأولئك الذين يسمى الله فحضرهم. In these ahadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, they indicate for us how the salaf were and affirm for us that قاعدة of أهل السنة والجماعة of being cautious of the people of opinion. The people who establish their religion and explain their religion based upon their opinion, not the evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, and the understanding of the Salaf. It's imperative that we take the understanding of who? Of the Salaf of this Ummah, the pious predecessors, the Sahaba, عنهم, how they understood what was their Aqidah, what was their Minhaj, what was their Saluk, how did they deal with people, how did they propagate the religion. This is how we understand Islam. Ahl Sunnah. But Ahl Bid'ah, on the other hand, as was narrated in, by Imam Baghari, uh, Baghawi or collected in Imam Baghawi's uh, book, Shara Sunnah, he said, On Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and an Nabiya, and an Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, there would uh, there'll be a people from my nation. In the last of the times, in the later later times, people who speak about things that you never heard uh, yourselves, you never heard anything about these things. They never discussed these kind of things, nor your fathers, nor your forefathers. Beware of them. Uh, beware. Uh, be, beware of this, and beware of them. And then he mentioned in Sahih Al Bukhari the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read the ayat in Surah Al Ali in Surah Al Ali Imran فَمَا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ وَابْتِغَاءَ فِتْنَةِ وَابْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and, and in this hadith the, the, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read that ayat which means uh, he is the one <coughs> who revealed unto you the book and from it is some verses that are clear and plain uh, you know that are uh, you make judgments that are very clear and apparent in their meaning that you make ahkam from. And others, and, and they are the Umm al-Kitab. And as for the other verses, 
that they are ambiguous, meaning that they have perhaps more than one meaning. There are some verses that require more explanation from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's how we know how to practice it. And as for those who are, have sickness in their heart, whose hearts uh, have a disease or are covered or have uh, uh, dis uh, deviance in their hearts, then they follow those verses which have, that are ambiguous. This is how they form their aqidah. They form their minhaj and their aqidah based on those verses that might have more than one meaning. Instead of going to the tafsir of the Prophet Sallallahu they suffice with their understanding of those verses that are ambiguous. And they do it as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَا مِنْ إِبْتِغَالْ فِتْنَةً وَإِبْتِغَالْ تَعْوِيلِ And they do it desiring fitna, desiring dis discord and disharmony and distorting the aqidah of Islam and to support their madhab and their minhaj and their ideology. This is what you see from Ahl al regardless of whether it was the Khawarij, uh, the Qadriya, the Jahmiya, the Mu'tazila, the Ashaira, the Diobandis that we have. All of these groups, they support their scholars, their ideology, those, those aspects where they have gone astray. They support it by trying to use verses of the Qur'an with their understanding or their sheikh's understanding without going how did the sahaba make tafsir of this how did the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam yufassir hadha ayat yufassiruna hadha ayat and how did the salaf you know the tabi'in especially mujahid and 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 and, 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 and uh, abdullah ibn mubarak and uh, you know all the 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 the, the tabi'in with ba tabi'in how did they understand these verses? How did they under they they explain these verses of the Quran? Is that in accordance with how these groups understand and form the basis of their jama'at and their groups and their sects? And you'll find that the answer is no. You'll find that that's where they go astray. Is they use they use evidences, but it's their istidlal. It's how they use those evidences. Are those, is there istidlal in accordance with the Salaf of this Ummah? Or is it in accordance with their desires? Then the Prophet said regarding that, that ayat, he said, If you see those who follow, those ambiguous verses, then they are those who Allah has mentioned in that verse and, war for be, and be warned against them. Beware of them. So that gives us the qaida, that usul sunnah of being away from Ahl bidah especially when they want to debate you, and especially if you don't have the knowledge and the tools to deal with them, and especially if your uh, intention is not to come to the truth, but your intention is a to, to, to build yourself up <coughs> or build your sect up but it's not the truth so avoid them and avoid debating with them for those various reasons that we made in detail we explained in detail in lesson number uh, five and four and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil